welcome to you. This is the spring member meetup of the Norwegian American Historical Association. We are thrilled to have you with us today. I'm Amy Boxrud. I'm the executive director of the Norwegian American Historical Association here in Northfield. So this event was originally scheduled to be held at Norway House on uh, April 30th in Minneapolis, as many of you know. And unfortunately, um, the pandemic prevented Tyria Yuranger from coming to Minneapolis and also from us holding our event. So I wanna say a special thank you to Tyria for his flexibility and his willingness to join us online today. And now I'd like to introduce our moderator, Darren Olson. Darren is a member of the Naha Board of Directors. He also chairs our publications committee. Darren is Associate Professor of European and World History at Indiana University East in Richmond. And among many other things, he is the author of Vikings Across the Atlantic, Immigration and the Building of a Greater Norway, 1860 to 1945. So Darren, thank you for your help today, both co-hosting and moderating this meeting, and I will turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Amy. I uh, appreciate that introduction. So. Uh, I know you're all, you're all eager to hear uh, Teria. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Just maybe nod, okay. All right, so let me introduce uh, our speaker so um, he can uh, get to his talk. Teria Mikael Hasta Joranger is director of the Norwegian Emigrant Museum in Utesta, Norway. He earned his PhD in 2008 from the University of Oslo in Migration and Ethnic Studies. He has published several articles on Norwegian migration to the United States, especially in the fields of transnationalism, migration, and ethnicity. Dr. Joranger is editor of Norwegian American Essays, a peer-reviewed academic publication on Norwegian immigration history and culture in America, and is co-editor of the anthology, Nordic Whiteness and Migration to the USA, a Hierarchy of Color. Uh, which is soon to be published by Routledge. He has been a lecturer in North American Studies at the Department of Literature, Area Studies, and European Languages, and formerly was chair of the Norwegian American Historical Association's Norway chapter, as well as a board member of the Norwegian American Historical Association here in the United States. Dr. Joranger is currently writing a book on the creation of a Norwegian American identity, which is under consideration by the Minnesota Historical Society Press. Uh, furthermore, under his direction, the Emigrant Museum of Norway has taken an initiative to organize a national jubilee of the bicentennial of Norwegian immigration to the United States in 2025. The Emigrant Museum is coordinating this work with the various Norwegian American organizations in the United States, that are working on the American effort to celebrate the Bicentennial Jubilee in 1925. So uh, without further ado, uh, I will turn it over uh, to Taria, and I'm looking very forward, um, as I'm sure most of you are, to hearing what he has to say about uh, this topic. So Taria, it's all yours. Thank you, Darren, and thank you, Amy. Um, uh, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, um, I appreciate being here, and that um, although I wasn't able to uh, to be in in uh, Midwest uh, for the for the talk at Norway House uh, to the Naha um, members, I, I had the opportunity to be here and to to talk uh, and to meet you online uh, digitally. Um, I am um, I. We'll present this talk um, um, about um, the new uh, directions in migration research um, with a limitation on, on the migration research between Norway and the United States. But I, I think that the topics that I will refer to are also relevant to migration streams between other countries as well. Um, and the, the themes and the, um, the team is relevant both in America and in Norway because the migration process between the countries is so interconnected. Um, in, in the first part of my uh, presentation, I will um, put the 
with Norwegian migration research, Norwegian American migration research in a larger historical context um, in order to understand the premises for the development of uh, the new directions in the field. So uh, in the second part, I will expand um, my presentation to include new directions in the field of migration history. I have divided the, um, my presentation into three parts. Uh, the first part is about um, um, the, the early years of um, scholarly work on migration history. The second is about the professionalization of immigration history um, as a field in the United States and Norway. And the third part is new directions in, uh, in the field. As a scholarly field, migration history developed in the interwar period in Norway. Thematically, however, we must move across the Atlantic in order to search for its origins, and we have to go to the United States. There, Norwegian American amateur historians and academicians had started to publish material about Norwegian immigration to America about 60 years earlier. The um, Norwegian American amateur historians academicians, they started to publish material about um, Norwegian migration to the United States about 60 years earlier than in Norway. And um, an interesting concept here is, is um, filiopietism. Uh, and that, this concept re refers to the fact uh, uh, that the first scholarly or amateur historical publications were published as part of an excessive veneration of the ancestors of these authors. This celebration of their heritage was common among several immigrant groups in the United States, and it was also a manner in which they could claim a rightful position in the ethno-racial hierarchy of the United States. Norwegian immigrants formed no exception, and a significant representative for the filiopietist tradition is Rasmus Björn Andersson, that you can see on, on the, this uh, photo. Born in Wisconsin in 1846 to Norwegian parents, he received a position at the University of Wisconsin in Madison in 1869. Six years later, he became professor in Scandinavian languages at the University uh, of Wisconsin until he resigned in 1883. Anderson was the first Norwegian immigrant who had an academic position in the United States. In his book, America Not Discovered by Columbus, which he published in 1874, he argues that America was discovered by Leif Erikson 500 years prior to Columbus. With his studies in Norse sagas, he praised the discoverers as a great people. And by drawing lines between their discovery of America to 19th century immigration, he also gave the descendants of the discoverers, Norwegian and other Scandinavian immigrants, a rightful position in American society. Anderson was the originator of the movement to honor Leif Erikson with a holiday in the United States. And ultimately, Leif Erikson Day became an official observance in his native Wisconsin and in other US states. Decades after Anderson's death, it first became a federal observance by presidential proclamation in 1964. At the time of the publication of the book on, on Columbus, 40 years had passed since the publication of the letters and handbooks from Norwegian immigrants to the United States. Ole Rinning's account about the conditions in America with American title, the English title, a true report on America for the enlightenment and benefit of farmers and the common man uh, about the conditions among Norwegian immigrants in America, give a practical introduction uh, to US law and conditions of living for immigrants. In addition to later handbooks and America letters, the handbook, handbooks eventually became of great importance to enlighten women and men about the United States as a goal for immigration. These sources represent the earliest written documentation about the conditions among Norwegian immigrants in the United States. Emigration until the last decades of the 19th century was a, predominantly a rural to rural emigration, migration where certain regions in Norway dominated. In 1903, Rasmus B. Anderson published Big the Evening, 
a collection of articles written by representatives from various Norwegian regions in America. You see, Vigdi Evening is the, is the last of the three titles on the, on the PowerPoint. Um, representatives who wrote articles in the Vigdi Evening were asked to show what they and their children had accomplished in their host country. This regionalization of immigration history was a continuation of the filial pietist tradition and introduced several studies of Norwegian settlement areas and the regional origins of settlers in Norway. Two examples include the publications written by amateur historians uh, that I also wish to mention, Jalmar Rud Holland, uh, the Norske Settlementers Historia, the history of the Norwegian settlements, and Martin Ulvestad, the Norwegians in America, or Norman in America. They are also part of this tradition of, of collecting, of collectors, um, collecting information about uh, regional origins of immigrants, um, and also their settlements, to the history in America. Uh, from a Norwegian perspective, the filial pietist tradition um, in historiography had a clear function of society building. In other words, the tradition aimed at strengthening the group identity of Norwegian immigrants and argued that they had a rightful place in American society. Besides, the publications that were published in this period had a strong focus on the impact of the group's stay in America. Later, immigration history became an arena where professional historians made analytic studies of the adaptation of Norwegians to US society. And I also wish to mention Rasmus P. Anderson in this respect, because as early as in 1895, he had published his book, The First Chapter of Norwegian Immigration, about the earliest immigration from Norway to America until 1840. With the book, he laid the basis for a new field of research. As professor in Scandinavian languages, Anderson was the only person outside of the Norwegian Synod with an acceptable academic background. And um, after Erasmus P. Anderson, um, knew he, uh, the uh, field of history became professionalized to a greater extent than earlier. From the 1920s in the United States and the 1940s in Norway, uh, migration history became um, the, the arena of professionals. And I wish to mention um, the historian Marcus Lee Hansen, born to a Danish immigrant father and a Norwegian immigrant mother. He is known as the father of migration as a modern historical field of study. His article in American Historical Review in 1927, entitled uh, Immigration as a Field for Historical Research, created a breakthrough for a migration history as a separate field in history. Hansen was the first person to publish an article on, in, on immigration in an American journal. The introduction of the strong loyalty and nativist 100% Americanism during World War I and the new immigration law of 1924, the Johnson-Reed Act, resulted in a strong reduction of immigration from Norway. As a response to the reduced immigrant stream, Norwegian American observers worked to preserve the history of the Norwegian American immigrant experience. This led to the organization of the Norwegian American Historical Association, NAHA, in 1925 a historical association that should represent the ethnic group of Norwegians. And this is the, and you're here today. Um, its purpose was to lo locate, collect, preserve, and interpret the history of Norwegian immigrants and their development in the United States. In addition, the founding of NAHA strengthened migration history as an academic field. The association's first editor and also one of its founders Theodore Blagen wrote several books about the topic of Norwegian immigrant history, immigration history, and became a spokesman for the new social history, grassroots history, where the author emphasized the interaction of different groups in society rather than the affairs of the state. Blagen wrote history from the bottom up, namely from the perspective of the common woman and the common man, and not from that of, than that of the elites. By using diaries and letters, songs and ballads of the immigrants and pioneers, Blagan aimed at giving the reader an understanding of daily life among the unlettered. 
Blaken's publications, Norwegian Migration to America, 1825 to 1860, and Norwegian Migration to America, the American Transition, put Norwegian immigration to, to the United States and the adaptation process into an analytical framework. Another significant publication um, is Carlton C. Qualley's Norwegian Settlement in the United States, published um, around the same time. Norwegian immigration history was largely a North American project authored by Norwegian-born or second-generation Norwegian-Americans until World War II. In the late 1930s, however, a young Norwegian historian, and besides a woman, laid the groundwork for an academic approach to the field of Norwegian immigration from Norway. And you might guess who that is, um, Ingrid Hemmingsen, who comes from a farm in the neighborhood of the Norwegian Immigrant Museum. The road to the museum is called Ingrid Hemmingsen's Road, Bay, and her, she gave the, her collections to the museum. Um, so we we're honored um, to have her collections here. In her two volumes, Vai in West, The Road to the West, she presents the conditions for immigration and also its effect in Norway. The second volume earned her the Doctor of Philosophy degree, PhD degree, in 1951, becoming the first female history doctor in Norway. She was appointed professor in American history at the University of Oslo in 1963 as the first female professor of history in Norway until she retired in 1980. Her contributions to the field on Norwegian migration history um, is, uh, she has done, um, is, very, um, is very strong and, and had, has a great effect on uh, many scholars. Um, and she retired in 1980, and one of her students was Odsvare Lovall, who later became professor of history at St. Olaf College, and in 1992 acquired the position as King Olaf V Chair in Scandinavian American Studies at the college. The pur pur purpose of that position was to strengthen and maintain the study of Scandinavian and Scandinavian American history. Lovall also held the position of Professor II at the University of Oslo for several years, and became the third editor of the Norwegian American Historical Association. As a result of his academic position in institutions both in Norway and the United States, and also as a NAHA editor, Lovell has continued the work of his mentor Ingrid Semmingsen to spread knowledge about Norwegian American experience both in the United States and in Norway. But most of his books have been translated into both Norwegian and English, which has expanded his readership in both countries. Uh, I may also add that uh, from the 1960s, migration research was influenced from a new field, the new social history, um, where scholars started to regard migration as a more complex and multifaceted uh, process than in earlier scholarship. Uh, earlier scholars, well, several scholars had regarded immigration to the US as a one-way process of assimilation, from being an immigrant to becoming an American. Historians who adhere to the new social history in turn regard the immigrant as an independent actor who actively took choices in the adaptation process in his or her host society. I also wish to, re to mention that there has um, the, um, the field of migration history in Norway has um, also includes uh, several scholars from different uh, institutions among others, Aina Niemi at the University of Tromsø and uh, Professor Niels Olav Östrem at the University of Stavanger, who have done much uh, research on um, uh, various themes connected to uh, migration history. I also wish to mention the um, letters, um, the America Letters series published by Orm Overland or edited by Orm Overland and Steiner Kjærheim in seven volumes, and which now has published an English version in three volumes and an indexed volume. Uh, and also Norwegian American essays in Norway and Norwegian American studies in the United States also have been uh, uh, important uh, publications to promote Norwegian migration research. Let me now turn to these new directions in migration research. We have seen a um, Based on what I've told, uh, I've presented now, uh, there is a development, um, a new, 
there are new directions in migration research. And these new directions have, um, have, been, have appeared um, in the last decades, and some of them are very recent. So I will, I will mention these as here. I must mention also to say that some of these um, directions are intertwined. So, um, but first of all, an there is an increased focus on the regions and their interaction with other groups. Second, there is a spatial and temporal expansion of Norwegian migration experience. And third, there is an expansion of new themes connected to groups and processes that have been neglected in the past. So we'll go uh, through uh, these um, uh, this direction. Um, to a great extent, I would say that publications about Norwegian migration to the United States have traditionally focused on the group in its own right and as uh, the group as community builders in the United States. Scholars in the field have emphasized the development of the ethnic identity of Norwegian Americans as a group and also of their various subgroups over time. Scholars, however, have had less emphasis on their encounter with other groups which would open up new perspectives in order to understand, understand Norwegian migration experience. Uh, and I, I have here the uh, John Jury's uh, book, uh, The Minds of the West. Here in this book, Yerda mentions Norwegians and other cultural groups in the United States and the development of ethnic culture in the upper Midwest from the 1830s to 1917 as a reciprocal process between the immigrant groups and American norms. And he discusses the, uh, the encounters between these groups um, more in, uh, rather than looking at the various groups uh, isolated. Um, so we get back to this, this um, uh, direction. Uh, another trend in the development of new themes in migration research is the spatial and temporal expansion of Norwegian immigration, both as a field in the New United States and in Norway. These topics provide a supplement to the centrality of the United States as a receiving country in Norwegian migration research. Um, multidisciplinary research project called Desired Immigrants, Frustrated Adventurers? Question mark. Norwegians in Latin America, 1820 to 1940, um, was initiated in 2008, involving researchers in Norway and Latin America. Although Latin America is outside the focus of this presentation in terms of geography, it is still relevant in portraying the overseas migration experience from Norway. Central to the project was the development of a database called Hula that will provide information about almost every Norwegian who traveled to Latin America during the period 1820 to 40. It provided knowledge of, on the topic and gave a basis for comparative studies with other groups. In his book, Across the Deep Blue Sea, published in 2015, Odd Lovell investigates a chapter in Norwegian immigration history that has never been fully told before. Here, the author relates how Quebec, Montreal, and other port cities in Canada became the gateway for Norwegian immigrants to North America replacing New York as the main destination from 1850 until the late 1860s. During those years, 94% of Norwegian immigrants landed in Canada. Um, in connection with um, spatial expansion of migration studies, um, uh, this expansion was not new. Ingrid Hemmingsen had included this, um, the perspective of including other destinations the United States in her research. Um, but these past decades, um, Norwegian scholars have started to write more about Norwegian immigration to other less known destinations on other continents. These studies trace the migration process of individual migrants to destinations, including the Dano Norwegian colonies in the Danish West Indies, in the Caribbean, to the Galapagos, the Sandwich Islands, to New Zealand, South Africa, China, and also depicting colonial interests in colonial Africa and Oceania. One ongoing research project has the title Merchants and Missionaries, Norwegian Encounters with China, 1890 to 1937. The study includes groups that have not been part of migration history in general, 
such as diplomats, business agents, and missionaries, and how they enter into a dialogue with their surroundings, where both immigrants and the whole society influence each other. Migration from Norway to the Danish West Indies occurred in the 17th and 18th, 18th centuries, which brings us to a temporal expansion of migration research. Until present, migration history has started with the first group migration from Norway, who traveled directly to the United States in modern times with the sloop restoration in 1925. So earlier migration streams to the United States and or to the North American continent has not been regarded as, a, as an integral part of the history of Norwegian overseas migration. Um, Norwegian immigration to the new Netherland colony by way of Amsterdam in the colonial era is um, one example of this expansion, this um, uh, spatial um, expansion in migration research. Norwegians were experts in forestry, timber, sawmills, and crafts, and their knowledge of the wilderness and their role as interpreters between the Dutch and the Native Americans gave them a specific and important role in the colony. Norwegians were one of the largest immigrant groups to Amsterdam in the 17th century, and Dutch historian Erika Kuipers has estimated that 41,000 people immigrated to the Netherlands from Scandinavia during that century, Norwegians constitution constituting half of them. According to Norwegian historian Ernst Berge Drange, the availability of new source material can expand our understanding of the roles Norwegians played in the new Netherlands colony. The study of this early wave would also be part of a study of a global transatlantic community in early modern times. The third um, direction in migration research, new direction, um, is a tendency to write more about groups that, that have been neglected in migration research in the past. For many years, migration history was written by men, with Ingrid Semmingsen as a significant exception, and the history was written about men to a great extent. Until the past decades, publications about women representing who represented about 50% of the population were relatively few as compared to those with, uh, published by men. In other words, gender history and the role of women in the immigration and adapt adaptation process has largely been missing in the great story about uh, migration. The anthology Norwegian American Women, edited by Betty Berglund and Dorian Lallon, forms a significant contribution to this field. According to Joan Jensen, quote, the new story gives women a voice and pre presence they have not had in other accounts." End, end quote. Other neglected groups are children, youth, and old people. Bob Lovell's most recent book, Two Homelands, is a personal narrative in which he portrays his own migration experience and also his childhood and upbringing, both in Norway and in, in the United States. And by combining events in his life with a scholar's knowledge, he knits his personal story into the web of the great general migration movement. And there are also other uh, scholars who have written about uh, uh, children and children immigration. Encounters between the Norwegian settler population and the indigenous population is, is also a neglected theme in Norwegian American migration research. Um, Betty Berglund, Karen Hansen, and Orm Overland have studied the contact between Norwegian immigrants and Native Americans in various locales. locales. Karen Hansen's research on Norwegian female homesteaders in the Spirit Lake Dakota Indian Reservation in North Dakota is a significant contribution to an understanding of the dialogue between Norwegians and American Indians. Another significant contribution is Ellen Maria Jensen's recent doctoral dissertation about the life stories about five Sami women who emigrated to the United States. Both studies take place in the early 20th century and offer opposite perspectives about gender, and about belonging to marginalized groups in society. The indigenous population in both Norway and the United States were subject to racialized othering to relinquish their native languages and culture under an assimilationist and colonial policy of Norwegianization and Americanization. Some immigrants were subject to shifting racial and ethnic identification over time. In the ethno-racial um, hierarchical society in the United States, some immigrants would have enjoyed white privilege, 
while other continue to endure being racialized by immigration officials and by knowledgeable, knowledgeable Nordic immigrants. Cultural encounters between groups also brings us to another new theme in migration research, at least uh, in Norwegian and um, American migration studies, namely whiteness studies. And this field was established in the United States in the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, it implies that one may study whiteness as an ideology or as a historical and social construction. And according to this view, one takes into account privileges and power structures connected to those groups that are accepted as white. The concept helps clarifying invisible structures and power relations in society, and it is a useful tool in the immigration debate. Contrary to the situation in the United States, there is a silence surrounding the use of these concepts, the concepts of color and race in migration research in Norway. This is probably influenced by the study of eugenics in the 1930s and the atrocities by the Nazis toward various groups based on their definition of race in the interwar period and during World War II. Norwegians were de desired immigrants to the United States. Norwegians and other Scandinavian immigrants from homogeneous white societies were privileged uh, on their credentials, their, pro their Protestant religion, and their biological features. However, they only became white upon arrival in their encounter with the multicultural society of the United States. A central question is how their whiteness affected their identity and their interaction with other groups and with greater society. A new ways of understanding uh, the process of migration is also by taking into account the psychological factor. How does a culture of migration develop? Nils Olavestrem from Norway has studied this topic in his research by posing uh, the following questions. Why did individuals choose to emigrate? And which motives led the individual to emigrate? Um, Transnationalism is another new, new, relatively new concept, um, which is uh, the concept, the definition is the economical, the economic, political, and cultural processes that uh, extend beyond boundaries of nation states. And Darren Olson's Viking Across the Atlantic uh, tells how the vision of a greater Norway expanded the boundaries of a Norwegian nation. Uh, in his book, Darren Olson describes Norway as a larger community in which membership is constructed or imagined. Belonging was based on cultural and shared traditions and not on the physical proximity. Um, I also uh, want to mention the study of return migration, the role of, right, of return Norwegian migrants from the United States as a new field, as an interesting field and a neglected field, uh, and also their contributions to nation building in Norway. How did return migrants with a new worldview and mentalities influenced by entrepreneurship and capitalism affect the building of Norway from the late 19th century until present? Norwegian immigrants helped build the United States, whereas return migrants were nation builders on both continents. Um, I am approaching the end of my presentation now, but I I have not referred to publications and projects initiated by scholars, but I also want to mention that a good number of non-scholars have a great interest in migration history as a theme. And I would say that many amateur historians and genealogists, both in the United States and Norway, contribute to the field of migration history with a detailed work on a number of topics. So to conclude, uh, how will migration research evolve from today? Of course, this is a difficult uh, question to answer. But migrations across boundaries are timeless. But changing times also bring new questions. A new generation is growing up in surroundings different than that of the parent generation, the various effects of globalization, and the availability of new knowledge from um, newly found and newly digitized source material are some factors that will move the field of migration history forward. I think that the variety of themes and perspectives in migration research could form a basis for scholars to be more active, not only in scholarly debates, but also in discussing issues of migration and ethnicity in a multicultural society. At least, in, at least in Norway, migration scholars have hardly been visible in discussion about these issues. Besides, knowledge about the migration experience is also important in order to be more reflective 
about who we are and how we treat others. Thank you. So Tari, I, I have a question and it's, I know it's one we've talked about before, but I think it would benefit uh, other people here. Uh, from my vantage point, it appears that historians of Norwegian emigration have done a really good job of researching the first century uh, of the emigration, you know, namely 1825 to 1925. Uh, what do you see as the subjects for research in, in this topic for the next century as historians start digging into uh, the immigrant, the Norwegian immigrant experience since 1925? Would you? I mean, I think you touched on these themes in a more general sense, but do you see any that maybe specifically might um, be worth that, that, that historians will go after? That's a good question. And I think that 1925 has uh, several historians have, have um, put the year 1925 as a kind of a dividing line. Um, as kind of the, the, um, uh, the big, um, when Norwegian American culture was at this, uh, at its, um, uh, not at its best, at the top. Um, but I think that the um, the interwar period, uh, the Immigration Act of 1924, you know, when the um, the immigrations, uh, there was a change in migration after this uh, Immigration Act. The immigration to the United States ceased. So the, the great uh, immigration migration area stopped. And um, I think that the, the migration that happened afterwards was, was a bit different. So um, when you ask about scholars, I, I understand that both American and, and uh, Norwegian scholars, um, um, I think that the with new generations, I think there will be new questions, um, and and I think that there is there is an increased interest in uh, in how Norwegians interacted with other groups. I think that will be a, a very um, a new direction from earlier, because earlier um, studies have concentrated much on the uh, on Norwegian immigration in itself uh, and the development of the group itself, uh, seen apart from uh, isolated from other groups. So I think that um, I've also mentioned a few um, uh, transnationalism, for instance. You know where you compare um, uh, conditions in Norway and the United States. Uh, you take uh, in your book, you mentioned the, the Greater Norway. Uh, I also think that return migration, how migration affected both the United States and Norway, also is an interesting field. Uh, thank you, Tarja. We have, uh, I see a question in the chat, so I will read it to you so everybody can hear it. Um, one of our audience members says, I'd like to ask why the speaker why he thinks the early scholars focus so exclusively on the Norway-US connection. I think it had to do with, with their, uh, they had to, they want to prove their right to be American, to good, uh, good Americans. Um, and that, that they had a rightful place in um, American society. Um, I think that was very important because they wanted to, to become um, Good, um, um, well, but good, uh, good, uh, good citizens. So they had to have, uh, um, so, so they saw the immigration in the light of uh, what could make them good American citizens. For instance, the the uh, Rasmus P. Anderson's focus on the Norse explorers, uh, like Ericsson, he was one of the first Norwegians in Amer Norwegian in America, and that made Norwegians. Um, that proved that Norwegians were, were um, very early in America. They had a rightful place, right, right to be there. Okay. Uh, would you please comment on the role of Norwegian language newspapers that were published in America? Yes, they had an important role. Uh, they, 
they combine, they, they tie together these uh, uh, Norwegian settlements and uh, they also um, um, made available a Norwegian American culture, both to Norwegian Americans, but also to Norwegians in Norway. Um, among others, the Dakota Posten had uh, more than a thousand uh, subscribers in Norway. They had, um, so that was, a, so the, the, the newspapers were an important linkage between Norwegian Americans in the US and also with uh, their relatives in Norway. So you have many people, my, my great great grandparents had the Cora Post because their son lived in North Dakota uh, and they could read about um, what happened in Norwegian. They could sit on the farm in, in Norway and read about uh, news from the US in, in uh, Norwegian. Okay, uh, a couple more questions, about three more. Here's one. Uh, could you please explain what you mean by spatial and temporal expansion? Um, yes. Maybe yes. dumb it down for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> spatial expansion, I mean uh, expansion in space uh, outside the United States. And temporal expansion, I mean that that's a, a, an expansion in time. That means that um, there is not only a focus on uh, on the United States as a destination for immigration, but these new directions also include new destinations outside the United States, like in Asia, of, um, um, South Africa, uh, etc., for Norwegian immigrants. Uh, temporal expansion, uh, then I mean that in, in traditional migration research, 1825 has been the, the year when uh, migration to America started. But with the, um, the focus on, uh, for instance, Norwegian migration to New Netherlands in the 1600s, this kind of expands that, um, that time span. Uh, for more than 200 years prior to what we have uh, used as a um, as a time uh, time span. Um, so I think that we're expanding both uh, geographically and in time. All right, thank you. I see much research has been represented just in text format or photographic format. Do you know of resources that use visuals to enhance the communication of the research? For instance, the documentation drawings of houses in Norway. Do you think this would be helpful to furthering the dissemination of Norwegian American research topics? As a limited Norwegian speaker reader, I wonder how language barriers affect us in getting young members interested in research that is currently available in Norwegian only. Yeah. Yeah, of, of course. Uh, Photos and, and the written material is the uh, is the most available source material. Uh, but I also think that uh, you mentioned the drawings, uh, for instance, um, of houses, of course. Uh, and, and I think that the, the migration experience um, uh, to to um, to analyze that, I think that we have to 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 go about to find other sources as well. Um, for instance, I um, uh, a few years ago, I edited um, an article about a Norwegian who drew, uh, he was a prisoner of war during the, uh, the civil war. And he, he drew um, uh, um, illustrations. From his uh, from the from the from the prison, you know, from daily life in prison. So that was a way of depicting um, daily life that is kind of um, difficult to. Uh, it's not available to to all of us. So, um, but I think that with the digitization of sources, like the Nas Norwegian National Library is digitizing a lot of source material, all this becomes more available to us. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another question, does Norway have any databases online where their schol scholarly research articles are shared and available? Is Hula accessible online from the US? Yes, I think. Well, I, I haven't accessed it from the United States, but it should be 
it's uh, it's free and uh, it's available um, online. But there might be um, limitations from other countries. But I I would try. I would try to test it. I could also mention that there is a database at the University of Oslo. Um, um, Einar Haugen and uh, linguists, uh, more recent linguists, um, have also have interviewed Norwegian Americans, and their interviews are online, so you can they're digitized, so you can hear interviews with uh, uh, Americans of Norwegian descent from the 1930s until today. Okay, I have another question. Uh, to what extent might you see the study of Norwegian Americans today as part of the immigration scholarly tradition? How do you see these new directions influencing the programs at the Immigrant Museum? Do you repeat, please? Okay, I'll try. Uh, to what extent might you see the study of Norwegian Americans today as part of the immigration scholarly tradition? How do you see these new directions influencing the programs at the Immigrant Museum? Yeah. The reason, yes, that's a, good, that's a very good question. Um, I think that the, the migration, also the, the, the migration experience, uh, it, it's a process. Uh, it, it has gone through various stages, uh, but there are some um, there are some um, parts of the process that are um, uh, that that is ident that you can find in um, relocate again. Of course, globalization is, is a new um, is making a difference from earlier. You can and transnationalism that's that you can you can be a, a citizen um, of Norway and reside in the United States. And you have much more, uh, the two countries are much more accessible than earlier. Um, but uh, but I, I think that the um, um, technology uh, and also is helping to, to understand more about um, each other. I, I think I'm trying to find an answer to the question. Um, the, the Norwegian Immigrant uh, Museum is, is collecting and preserving um, uh, source material, documentation about Norwegian immigration. And we include that, uh, we, we have, uh, we include the um, uh, immigration from 1825 until present. And for instance, uh, more than 50,000 Norwegians have houses in Spain, they're migrants. That's also a part of the Norwegian migration experience. Exactly. Uh, it's not in the United States, but there are some processes that are, that are similar. And we include those processes, migration processes here uh, at the museum, both older uh, and also more recent. Okay, uh, another question. Could you comment on material culture studies? Is this an expansion on traditional historical research into immigration? Material culture is a neglected um, part of migration history. Um, and it's a very, and I think it's, a, um, it, it was not mentioned here, but I think that the, um, the migration of traditions uh, building traditions is, is a good way of uh, also to, um, you know, to link this transnational aspect. To what extent did Norwegian immigrants bring um, um, patterns, you know, uh, building patterns from their home region to the region where they settled in uh, Iowa or um, North Dakota? Uh, I think that's also a part of it because we have now I have talked about the written word the about immaterial culture. Material culture is also an interesting aspect. And if we can combine the two, I think that would be given an interesting picture of the migration experience. Okay. Um, let's see, here's this is a long one. I will, well, I think I'm going to ask the first question. 
You mentioned the emerging importance of gender roles and migration. What patterns have you seen in the recording of rural to urban migration for women after 1925? How did Norwegian American female migrants find their place in the emerging urban United States? Most of my research has been in uh, a rural to rural uh, migration. So of course, uh, urban migration uh, increased um, in the, during the 20th century. Um, but I, um, I think that the, uh, regardless of time, uh, I think that urban um, migration was an important part in you know, making women more independent uh, and to have uh, roles. The rural communities were more conservative, but I think that an urban environment made it more possible for them to enter um, uh, work professions that made them uh, more independent, I guess, from traditional roles. All right, uh, here's another question. How might we discuss difficult topics like whiteness to Norwegian American groups in our own towns? When whiteness may be seen as a controversial topic to some, but very important to unpack so that we increase our societal consciousness surrounding immigration. Do you have any tips perhaps on delving into this topic in our own Sons of Norway chapters, for instance? That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Of course, yes, it, it is a, it, it, it uh, it is a controversial uh, concept because it perhaps I think it perhaps breaks with some of the uh, innocent um, beliefs that we have. And I, when I first uh, read about whiteness, I I think well, uh, whiteness is um, is transparent. It's invisible because we like in Norway those immigrants were all white. Uh, there were homogeneous and it was only with the, in when they uh, arrived in America in a multicultural society that they were defined as white uh, as opposite to other other groups uh, and also I think that whiteness may also be associated with um, you know politically with, with some um, very um, yeah Press right wing uh, kind of, um, but, but but I think that whiteness we, we should re regard whiteness as a, as a concept, uh, as a symbol of um, um, uh, privilege uh, that Norwegians were privileged uh, coming to the United States. There were uh, privileged groups compared to some. They could they could have the right to vote. They could buy land. Uh, and they were regarded as good American citizens because they had cred credentials. So I think that, it, uh, but I think it's it, it's whiteness. Uh, I think that we should have an awareness about the concept because not, we, not everybody was that lucky. Uh, Norwegians were privileged uh, as opposite to other groups. So I think that if, if we can present that, then we can also make more um, uh, include, you know, the Norwegians as part of a larger group. We can see Norwegians in relation to others. Okay. Uh, here's a good question. It was very similar to one I had. Norwegians have moved to Texas in the past 30 years to work in the oil industry. Many Americans have moved to Stavanger uh, in Norway to work in the Norwegian oil industry. What are some of the themes that could be developed from studying this recent migration, including the money involved, what documentation should Naha collect to document this migration? Very good, very good. And that's that's recent immigration. I think that's that's really important to to collect too. And you know, Americans going to Norway and Norwegians to America, to America. I and I think that when the oil industry in Norway developed, it was the U.S. that helped Norwegians uh, to, um, to to build up that industry because you had knowledge. Uh, you know, uh, there was a knowledge in the U.S. about the oil industry, and I, I remember interviewing Norwegian-born um, who worked in the oil industry in Texas in the 1990s, 
And it was really interesting because in, in that, I was at the Siemens Church in Houston, I, I believe, Houston, Texas, and there were uh, Norwegian born and there were Norwegian Americans, I mean, Americans of Norwegian descent, fourth generation, uh, who attended the same Siemens Church. And it was interesting to see the differences in culture. Um, so I think that um, the professional migration, I think that kind of depicts uh, what what happens with the uh, Americans going to Norway and opportunities, the job opportunities, uh, both in Norway and the United States. I think it has to do with globalization as well. Uh, here's another question. Do you think there are opportunities for migration research to look at post-1925 developments in earlier Norwegian American settlements? For instance, how have towns like uh, Stoughton, and Decorah and Poolsbo and Clifton, Texas developed or perhaps abandoned their relationships with Norway? Yes, good questions, good questions. And I think that we, we have to look at the, at the long run. We have to look at long time periods in order to, to depict changes. And it would be interesting also not only to look at a specific town but also to compare um, um, a couple or, or three um, areas that were settled uh, by Norwegians and how they had developed. Um, so I think that's a very, very good because there is a development after 1925, and I think that we have to see the long range in order to find the real uh, development um, of a culture. And just my comment I know a lot of these towns have used their heritage to promote tourism. Um, yeah, of the, of these, especially a lot of these small towns, and I think that's a very, you know, that's an interesting yes. phenomenon as well. One question that came up earlier, Tadia, when is your book on whiteness available and, and in what language or languages? It will be out on August 4th. Uh, it's in English. And it's an anthology with 10 articles, 10 chapters written both by Nordic and uh, American historians and scholars. Wonderful. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you so very much to Tedia and to Darren. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, keep an eye out for updates for our October 24th biennial meeting. Uh, we will keep you abreast of whether we will be meeting virtually or face to face. And uh, just a heartfelt thank you to everyone who was part of this first ever online event. We're making history right here and now. And um, thank you so much as always for your support of Naha during these challenging and uncertain times. It means a lot to us. So take care everyone and be well. And thank you again.